Okay, so I want to talk about imbalanced data for a few minutes because it's actually a really important topic. Uh, so as I mentioned, there are many different evaluation metrics um, that we that we sort of discussed a bit earlier. And I want to point out that when a data set is balanced, like if you have the same number of positives and negatives in the data set, then accuracy might be a good, you know, a good evaluation measure to use. But when, but what if you have a very imbalanced data set? Or what if having a false positive could be, is like really, really bad compared to having a false negative? So I want to talk about um, what happens in that case. So imbalanced data has been called one of the most annoying and difficult problems in all of machine learning. And here's why. So if you have a data set that's highly imbalanced, so here's a sea of negatives with a few positives floating around in it, and you run a classification algorithm, then what, it, what does it do? Well, of course, it just predicts that everything is negative because that classifier is 99% accurate because there's only 1% of positives in the whole data set. But that, of course, is not what you actually want here. What you actually want is for the positives to be valued more than the negatives, okay? So it, even if this classifier is 99% accurate, it's actually totally meaningless. It's a trivial classifier. It just predicts everything's negative. What you really want is something like that, where, um, where you actually care about some balance between the positives and negatives, but it's not equal, right? You care about the... If you, if you, if you, would, you would be happy to sacrifice say 10 negatives, as long as you get one positive right. And you, don't, you want this one rather than that one. Okay, so um, the way we usually set up a loss function or a, a risk functional in machine learning is we have a loss function and a regularization term. And the loss function is the same for all the data points. It just, you know, a loss for one data point is, is, is you know, comparable to a loss from another data point. And so a misclassified positive, that's worth the same as a misclassified negative. And so in order to fix that, what we're going to do is split the loss term into just, we're going to separate out the positives and the negatives so that we have just, you know, the sum of losses for the positives on one side and the sum of losses for the negatives on the other side. And then what we'll do is um, weigh the losses for the positives and negatives differently by putting a, um, a, 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 a imbalance parameter to multiply one of the two terms. So here, um, a, each positive example is worth C times a negative example. So you're, when you minimize this criteria, you're actually weighing each positive as if it were, um, the, as if it had the weight of C times a negative, okay? So you might misclassify a whole bunch of negatives in order to get one positive right. Okay, so hopefully the algorithm will then choose that particular model now. Now, I should mention that there are a lot of different ways to handle imbalanced data. Uh, there are ways where you would take the, um, take the minority class and you would upsample it, like you create more synthetic positive data just so that the positives are worth more. But, um, but simply weighing the positives more is actually very valuable. It's a good way to do it. Okay, so, so now each positive is worth you know, C times a negative. So just to summarize, if you have imbalanced data, it's not a good idea to report plain accuracy because you could mislead someone into thinking that your model is 99% accurate when it actually is, but that's not meaningful. Uh, you should um, adjust the imbalance parameter C to obtain your ideal balance between true and false positives, and then always look at the confusion matrix to assess false positives and false negatives separately. Also, using the RSE curves is actually valuable because you can view the positives and negatives on different axes. Thanks.